Well, hi, everyone. I'm Andy Yasher. I'm editor at Bloomer Boomer. Now, I only wish I had understood it better when I was starting out in life. I think my mind would have been more settled and tranquil. That's the great thing about getting older, you know? We get much better at understanding ourselves. Now, what I'm talking about is understanding my monkey brain. Now, it's funny terminology that goes back to the 14th century Buddhism and associated with our unsettled and restless mind. Now, unsettled and restless. Uh, does that sound familiar? Ever struggled to get that under control? Well, now I sure did. And that's what we're going to be working on today as we speak to a meditation coach, Justin Comer, who has been teaching and practicing meditation now for more than 30 years. And he says that anyone can master the practice and enhance their lives. He has a new book out. It's this one. It's called Meditation for Life. So we're going to talk with uh, Justin Comer in just a moment. But first, um, I just want to get a plug in for Bloomer Boomer. And it is about optimism, idealism, and realism. It's about life's challenges, whether it's loneliness or the surprises that life brings to our mind and body. The message is, is really pretty simple. It's embrace age, empower dreams, and embrace life. And we would love for you to uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel and our lively Facebook page. There are live events around the country and some other cool things. And we also have our newsletter, so check us out. And we'll be right back with Justin Comer in a moment. Well, our guest is Justin Comer, who's been teaching and practicing meditation for more than 30 years and says anyone can master the practice and enhance their lives. And he has his new book, Meditation for Life. Justin, I want to thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me, Andy. Well, you know what? I mean, my uh, uh, vision of perfect meditation as a as meditative state is, is something near an out-of-body experience where, uh, you know, I'm almost removed from time and thought. It's uh, like being in a land of peace and harmony. Now, I really do think that, and I've ha reached it a few times. I cannot tell you how long it lasted. And I, am I anything near reality on what it means to, to reach the perfect meditative state? Uh, no, I, I think you, um, I wouldn't say you've reached the perfect meditative state, but you have experienced one of the states that's available in meditation. And I think uh, there's, meditation's a big topic. It covers a lot of different techniques, a lot of different traditions, and there are a lot of different reasons for doing it. And what you're experiencing is what some people call that sort of transcendent state of consciousness that is available through certain types of meditation. Um, and that's, that's definitely doable if that's what your interest is. Um, my personal take is I, I think that's of interest to some people, but meditation has a lot more to offer than that as well. Oh, wow. I didn't. Uh, OK, well, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm dying to get into that in a little bit now. Uh, while I just told you that I've reached what I consider a meditative state now, it, it's extremely difficult for me and sometimes it, it's never achieved. Yeah, I think um, it's funny. Meditation uh, is, is on one hand is incredibly simple. And on the other hand, there are all of these complexities and difficulties with certain parts of it. And sometimes in meditation, we can experience these you know, what really wonderful moments, either moments of real calm and peace, or as you're experiencing occasionally these sort of transcendent experiences, um, which are kind of amazing. And sometimes we then want to have those experiences again. And, and unfortunately, meditation doesn't really work that way. You sort of just have to do the exercise. And sometimes you have these incredible experiences and sometimes you just do the exercise. But uh there's benefit whether you have those experiences or you don't have those experiences. You know, I, I got to say that uh, if I was ever in one of your classes, I would be absorbed by your voice. It is beautiful. It's so calming. And I would I would bet that maybe that's come from uh, at least conducting uh, classes, don't you think? Or or is that just you? I think it might just be the accent. I don't think I, <laughs> yeah. I don't think when I'm teaching in England that anybody's quite so enthralled. <laughs> well, you know how us and the uh, us Yankees are here. We think any British accent is wonderful. But um, you know, every day I'm I'm absorbed with issues uh, surrounding those of us uh, over 50 now, uh, and I see so much is being discovered about the benefits of meditation. 
Now, where do you see it going? And I guess, uh, do you see it becoming um, any easier to achieve? I think um, there, there has been an enormous amount of scientific research that started around the area of meditation. And certainly, the I think we're still in the early days and it's dangerous to extrapolate too much from a few results. But what we are see, what we're see, starting to see and what we, I think there's the potential is is that we're starting to see that there there is, seems to be some evidence that meditation really does help with brain health, for example. Um, and people who've, even if they've just started meditating, you, you can start to see changes in brain structure. People who've been meditating a long time, you see dramatically different uh, changes in brain structure. How interesting. And I know that uh, I, again, going back to what I just said, I study this a lot and there is so much written on it. and. Uh, you know, we're, we talk so much about brain health and, uh, and, I, and meditation seems to be linked to uh, healthy, a healthy brain and that's what everybody's after uh, at any age, but it's particularly as you get older. I think one of the analogies I like to give is that uh, we, we know that if you do one exercise perpetually and you don't do other exercises, then one part of your body gets strong but the rest of your body starts to atrophy and becomes weaker. And I think that's true with our mind as well, is, is that if we aren't exercising the mind in different ways, if we're, just, if we're just allowing it always to take the same patterns, to think the same things, to do the same exercises with our brain, then we, we get good at that, but the rest of the brain atrophies and the rest of our mind becomes less strong, less skillful. And I think one of the great things, and, and this is really the in many ways the big picture of my book is that in many ways finding meditation is this exercise that exercises so much more of our brain and our mind and it's very simple and yet enormously powerful in finding or activating new parts of our brain yeah and uh you know we can have a discussion about meditation where it's, i mean it's hard not to have a discussion with, about meditation without addressing some of the the popular uh, apps out there and i'm uh, if i'm not mistaken sure. apps like headspace and calm are some of the biggest selling apps on the uh, app store uh, what's your sense of that oh i think that they're, they're terrific um i i uh i have no I don't have an app, I don't have any part in an app, but I would throw in one other one, which although Headspace and Calm, I, I'm more familiar with Headspace, which I think is incredible, but, um, and, I, and I've heard great things about Calm, but there is another app, uh, it's called the Insight Timer, uh, and it's free, and it, it actually sells, well, it's free, that's why it sells, I suppose, but there are many, 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 many more people using Insight Timer than using Headspace or Calm. Well, I think if it if it, w it worked, people would probably pay for it. Uh, but uh, okay, I'll I'll definitely check that one out. And um, you know, is meditation about uh, generating endorphins and dopamine, naturally produced chemicals in our body, uh, or do we see something else about it? That's a that's a great question. Um, I'm not a, a, a biologist or, or a neuroscientist, so I'm not so familiar with the exact chemicals. Uh, I, I think there are definitely times during meditation, during certain types of meditation, when you can get that rush and it can feel ecstatic and joyous. And you can get this sort of metaphysical, mystical sense of union with everything. And, and that can be pretty magical. I'm sure there are a lot of chemicals, good, you know, fun chemicals being released into the blood when that happens. What I am perhaps a little bit more familiar with is uh, sort of the opposite of that, which is how it decreases our stress response. And, uh, and so all of those stress-related chemicals, which is adrenaline, the adrenaline-related chemicals and cortisol, those chemicals come down. So they re result in a decrease in a sense of anxiety, uh, frustration, stress, um, and all those related uh, side effects uh, that can be so damaging to our health and to our well-being. And I think once you start to see a decrease in some of the stress-related chemicals, then you just, you, you naturally feel better. Wow, that's very encouraging. Uh, where do you see uh, meditation going? Because um, unless I'm totally mistaken, uh, it seems as though it's really getting a lot more attention and more people are, are, are getting involved. 
do you see an evolution or just more people practicing it and, and learning it? No, you're right. There has been an explosion of interest in this, mostly, I think, because the science is starting to uh, show very promising re uh, results in terms of people who meditate and what the benefits are. What we are, one of the most exciting developments, I think, is, is actually with kids. So we're starting to see meditation introduced into a lot of schools. Uh, in the US, um, there's a lot of interest. Uh, people like Goldie Horn runs a very large charity, or she, she's, a, she's a main um, proponent of a very large charity for kids in schools. In England, there's the Mindfulness in Schools program, which is huge, and that's being rolled out across a lot of Europe. Um, so I think because we're seeing the benefits in terms of how good it is for people to help train their mind, get more of a handle on how their mind works and how their emotions work, and meditation does that, I think there is a, a lot of interest. The, the army is using it now on people who are being deployed so that they have better tools for dealing with the difficulties of, of being in, in the theater of war. Um, but I would say that certainly at least half of the people who come to my class are, are older or are of the Bloomer Boomer uh, demographic. Um, and for them, it's, it's about a number of things. But I think what, what people are looking for one is is definitely that they have a little bit more time sometimes on their hands that you know the the daily uh ritual of just having to get kids off to school and then get to work and doing all of the chores of daily life as as some of those things are taken away people have more time and they're starting to look and see okay what do i want to do with my time and and i think people discover something in meditation whereby they can actually get a better quality of life if they meditate even if it's just for a few minutes a day. And then there is the sort of the, the brain health side of it. I think people like the fact that some of the studies show that it improves things like memory and concentration and, and focus. But I asked, I recently asked one of my, uh, somebody who comes to class a lot, and I asked her uh, what she gets out of class and whether she thought there was anything specifically about being older that meditation was relevant to. And she gave me, a, I thought, what was a fascinating answer. She sort of took me by the arm and she said, Justin, I'm 77. And I was like, oh, congratulations. She said, no, 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 you don't understand. <laughs> and I said, well, what? And she sort of said, being 77 means I've been through a lot. And I've been, I've had wonderful experiences, but I've had my fair share of not so wonderful experiences and, and the tough things that life has given. And she was saying that, you know, one of the great things that meditation has allowed her to do is to let go of some of the baggage that she's accumulated, sort of the, the psychological baggage that she's accumulated in her life. And that she can start to see each day with a newness and an optimism that some of the stuff of life had taken away from her. And I think I think that's huge, is that sure, it's, it's great for kids and yes, it's good for people in the middle of their lives. But this idea that meditation actually has a lot to offer specifically to older people as well. I think I, I was touched by her, her reply. Yeah, I, and I think it goes back to the, the monkey brain uh, gibberish sure. I was talking about yeah. a little bit earlier. Well, Justin, listen, I, I sure appreciate it. Uh, and here the, again, uh, here's the book, uh, Meditation for Life. Anything else that uh, you need to, I mean, I mean a takeaway to, uh, for, for folks uh, who are maybe just getting involved or interested? I think the only thing I'd want to say, Andy, is I think a lot of people have a certain reticence towards meditation because they think it's going to be really hard. That they think that they're familiar with how their mind works and how their mind is a little bit all over the place. And they, they think that because maybe their mind is a little scattered, that, that they're not going to be able to meditate. And all I'd want to say is that's whatever your experience is of your mind is what everybody's mind is like everybody's mind gets distracted and as i say right at the beginning of the book we just because you're distracted doesn't mean you can't meditate people who meditate have distracted minds in fact that's why we meditate is because we have distracted minds and i think meditation's a lot it's a lot easier than people who haven't done it um i think it's a lot easier than people think it is Wow, very encouraging. I, I've thoroughly enjoyed talking to you. Uh, thanks, Justin. Andy, thank you very much. Our guest has been uh, Justin Comer, who's been teaching and practicing meditation for more than 30 years and says, 
anyone can master the practice and enhance their lives with his new book, uh, Meditation for Life. We'll be right back. Well, uh, I hope you liked the show. I hope you learned a thing or two. The full show will be available on YouTube and at Bloomer Boomer. We have other shows coming up with some really amazing guests, so please like us on Facebook and visit us at bloomerboomer.com. Until next time, so long, folks.